horror films aren't always escapist fun. This week we are setting aside mask killers and mythical monsters for a more real threat. Variola Vera, which is also the Latin name for smallpox, is a 1982 film from former Yugoslavia, which is part horror, part hospital drama, and part historical account. In 1972, two decades after Europe had eradicated the disease, a small case of smallpox was identified in a hospital in Belgrade. Variola Vera is a fictional interpretation of that pocket of time. It all starts with the haunting melody of a flute. A travelling pilgrim is enticed by the flute player and purchases the instrument from him, undeterred by the man's apparent sickness. In what must become the greatest case of bias remorse of all time, the pilgrim ventures to Belgrade, where he unsurprisingly becomes ill himself. The real surprise comes later, when the doctors discover it is smallpox. The hospital has already been set up as a struggling institute due to the interpersonal style dramas and the building itself being in disrepair. Eventually, the government imposes a forced quarantine on the hospital and everyone inside. We, the audience, are trapped alongside them, wallowing in the never-ending tension, terrified of an invisible killer villain. Dangerous viruses, face masks, lockdowns, quarantine. I am creating this review a year and a half into the COVID-19 pandemic, and it is impossible not to draw parallels to current events whilst watching. With this film, and indeed many horror films, you regularly ask yourself, what would you do in that situation? Personally speaking at least, my experience in this pandemic has been thankfully distant from the events depicted in this film. But after 18 months of absorbing the news and all the stories from others who have been less fortunate, Barry Oliveira hits the day. The film is not presented as a docudrama per se, but it still all feels very real. It is shot in a very simple fashion, free from any directorial flourishes or distracting elements that might remind you that you're watching a film. It is a clinical experience by design. From the basic whitewashed opening credits to the pragmatic matter-of-fact presentation of events. The actual hospital that was at the epicenter of the whole ordeal was used as a primary shooting location and plenty of research was carried out to ensure the makeup was a true representation. Some might argue and complain that this is not a horror film in a strict traditional sense, but it is often labelled as one. The dread is relentless. At first it comes from being omnipotent. We know the severity from the off, but the infected individual is free to roam, painfully unaware. I compare it to the recent Chernobyl miniseries, where you're screaming at the TV for the guys in charge to take the situation more seriously, although this story is not as infuriating or negligent as that. An expert on smallpox is brought in, and his presence is wonderful, both comforting and alarming. His hidden persona behind this inhuman hazmat getup is like a plague doctor of old. Everyone in the room goes silent when he arrives. The dread is bolstered by the recurring melody of the flute, a constant terrifying reminder of how simply this incredible threat began. Given how terribly the situation could have gone in real life, it is a somewhat happy ending, but the silence that ends the final scene, especially watching today, is all too deafening. 